What's going on guys? Welcome back to Bodark Kikos. This is Josh. Uh, I wanted to do a little video to talk about breeding tips, things that you can recognize in your herd, uh, some things that we do around here for our breeding program. And uh, I just kind of wanted to share some thoughts and some things uh, that we do. Maybe it'll help you and uh let's get into it so i'm out here and uh i come out here to megawatts uh group and uh, i'm gonna look them does over and check them out uh so we started with our uh group we started breeding in august so we put our bucks in august first and they're still in today and uh you know every people do it different on their own farm some might breed uh start in november some might start in october some september it just depends on how it goes for you when you want to have them kids and uh, when we started in august it was pretty warm out and uh, there was not a whole lot of breeding going on so we've noticed uh, he's bred several does right now megawatt he's got over 40 head in his group and uh, I've noticed some that we thought was getting bred that they must have missed on their first cycle that he's breeding now. And uh, that's, a, that's a good uh, indication of why you want to leave them bucks in for so long. At least 45 days. That way you can uh, hit both cycles. And uh, weather has a lot to do with it. Uh, there's several other factors that go along with having a successful breeding program. So one of the things that we did this year was uh, we nutritionally flushed these does. So prior to putting them in breeding pastures, uh, we come and we started feeding a little early. Uh, that kind of helps with the body conditioning. Um, these does, uh, they had come off of a pasture with plenty of nutrition in it. But uh, nutritionally flushing these does, it kind of ups the ovulation. Uh, it, it could produce you know more uh twins triplets uh so we know that just nutritionally flushing them that it's going to help out with our breeding program and that's what we did this year this is kind of the first year that we started doing that so two weeks prior to putting the buck in we went in and started uh feeding these girls and you can see that they, they have they've maintained a good body condition so going into breeding season you don't want your does going in uh, out of uh, overweight, out of shape, too fat. You want them to be just just healthy enough. Enough nutrition there that their body type is good. You don't want them too thin uh, because you want them being the best that they can be whenever you're going to breed them. So uh, nutritionally flushing these girls we think adds value to them, adds value to our kid crop and uh, I know it's worked for other farms and we just kind of picked up on that did that this year and, and uh, so far by looking at this group of does you can tell that their body condition has maintained well So another thing on breeding tips is you need to have a quality buck. Um, he is 50% of your herd. That buck is going to be half of your herd. Uh, always have a good quality buck to uh, make your kid crop better, have a successful breeding uh, season. And I know for a fact that we've got that here. We've got two bucks that are outstanding, Megawatt and BT, and uh, we're impressed with them. We've seen on this farm here what uh, BT can do for us we've got several uh, does that we've kept from him and they're growing out good and then uh, megawatt where he come from we seen what he did for them and uh, that's kind of why we jumped on the opportunity to get him here so we know what his kids look like how his kids uh, did on the scales and we know that uh, megawatt's gonna be a great uh, advantage for us on this farm having him because he is going to improve our kid crop tremendously.
So uh, let's talk about um, when you put your bucks in is when, when you're going to determine your uh, kidding to happen. So the gestation is five months. So when you put your bucks in, so we put our bucks in in August. So we're expecting kids sometime in uh, January. So whenever uh, it starts greening up, we want to be able to pull them kids off and uh, we want their moms to recover so around uh may is when we'll do weaning so we shoot for a january kidding crop and uh, that way we will have uh the moms will be able to recover and uh, we can pull the kids off in may so what we're about to do here soon is i'm going to pull my does out and uh, take them to my house and what i'll do is i'll carry a buck with me so I'll carry either Mega Water BT over to my place, and just in case one of the does missed, I'll have a buck for a cleanup. So I'll have that buck in the pasture with my group of does at my house, and he'll stay there for about a month. If there is a doe that's missed, she'll cycle and he'll be able to, to breed her. Um, that's just a good way to make sure that you got all your does covered. So a doe's heat cycle, they'll be they'll come in 18 to 21 days and then they'll be ready to breed for about three days and if that buck misses one of them does during that three days then she'll cycle again in 18 to 21 days and she'll be back in so you can see megawatt out here he uh he's maintained a good body condition he's been in with these does since august the first he's bred we have seen him breed several does in here um he's taking care of them and and uh, we like that he's an easy keeper. So I've noticed that right now he's sticking to two does. Uh, he's sticking to this doe right here, this tan one right here. He's sticking to her, and he's sticking to the one over by the fence. So it tells me that he's probably, uh, they're probably in, and he is probably breeding them. Let's get into uh, some signs that you might see in your does to let you know that they're in, they're ready to be bred. Signs that your does are in heat, uh, you'll see their tail flagging. Their tail will be flagging and that indicates that they're ready to be bred. They're, they're coming in heat, uh, they've cycled, they're in heat, they're ready to be bred. Uh, you'll notice other, we, and we've got a couple here in this group that they like to act like a buck. They'll act buckish. So they'll walk up, they'll nudge them does, they'll mount them, they'll get up on them and ride them. And they're, you know, showing to us that, that they're in heat, that the other does are in heat. So these bucks, uh, they'll get aggressive in breeding season. And another reason why we keep, you'll see right here, here's a mega watch group. And you can't really see them, but way over there, there's a pasture in between them, is BT's group. BT's got a group of over 20 does and um, we keep them separated a pasture between them because these bucks what they'll do is they will get to fighting each other does will go over and call other bucks and uh, they'll tear up fences gates all kinds of stuff so we'll keep a pasture in between during breeding season and uh, if we rotate we'll rotate a pasture over to this pasture over here BT's group will rotate a pasture away too. That way it keeps uh, everything kind of tame and under control. Uh, we don't have no bucks trying to get in here and breed these other does. We know exactly who is in with this group and uh, we want to make that easier on us. You'll notice those does that are in, or I know I seen uh, Megawatt. He bred this doe right here, this white doe. He bred her. Um, I guess it was a couple days ago. So uh, she didn't get bred the first cycle because I know she was in here with him. Watch him as he he'll he'll smell of her and curl that lip up. I know that he bred her a couple days ago. I seen him do it, and uh, she was over there a while ago rubbing on him, showing him some attention. So uh, for how many ever days that she was in, he was breeding her. Ah. 
I couldn't figure out these does are all interested. So they kept looking over here in this other pasture. I couldn't figure out why, but I see now this livestock guard dog. She's come over here checking things out. You can see her over there. And these does, they sure are interested in her. They're all got, got their necks perked up and they're checking her out. What that, that dog did is she probably seen me out here filming, walking around, checking things out. So she come over here to check this pasture just to make sure that nothing funny is going on. And she just she just checking on her goats, that's all. And uh, these, I didn't see her coming. I guess she come around the pool bank and these does, they sure was watching. I kept seeing them looking over here. I was wondering what were they looking at and I seen that dog come over the hill. So they already sensed her being in that pasture and they was really curious about her. So there were some keys to uh, breeding tips, breeding season, things that are going on. Like I said, we, uh, we've had our bucks in since or August the 1st, and uh, we're about ready to pull our does out and uh, put them in our the pastures where they're going to be doing some winter grazing, and we started to put out some hay. We still have some green grass, you can see, but the quality, I'm sure, is, is uh, fading. Uh, the protein in the grass is probably not there but a key thing to having a successful kidding is you want to make sure that these does are nutritionally taken care of you want to uh, make sure that you've got a good quality hay um, our hay fields are, are back over here you can you can see that they're kind of already grow back up but we put fertilizer on them we know the protein is going to be there and uh, we make sure we take good care of our hay pastures we do a first cutting and then we do a second cutting and in between we put some fertilizer out to up the protein on it put nitrogen out so we know that we have good quality uh, forage for them in the winter time and uh, you know keys to having a successful kidding you want to you do have to do a little bit of uh, feeding in the winter time we do feed a little bit not it don't amount to much but it is enough to maintain a good healthy balance for the does uh, that way whenever they are the babies are growing in them and it's time for them to kid that they, they've got the upper hand we want to make sure that we feed them the best uh, hay we can get uh, we do have some alfalfa hay that we feed uh, in their later gestation period and then we have quality hay that we put out that's out all the time for them and we do supplement with a little bit of feed um, so them are just some keys things that you can do to have a successful breeding season and i hope that maybe just if if there's one thing in here that you picked up on i hope that helps you out and uh, like i said there's uh other farms that do it different this is just the way that we do it here in texas and it works for us uh, we had a very successful breeding season last year and uh, we are hoping that the few things that we added this year will continue that success and i just wanted to share my thoughts with you on that hopefully it helps you out and uh, i appreciate you guys watching appreciate you subscribing to the channel if you're not subscribed please hit that subscribe button come along with us stay up with what we got going on if you'll ring that notification bell you'll get notified when i put out new videos but uh like always appreciate you guys watching and we'll catch you on the next one